Lord has been doing. You got 45 minutes, dude. <laughs> you heard Mike. Dan, it wasn't my fault. Mike said so. Wow. Welcome back, everybody. Um, if you could stand right here right now and listen to you all sing, glory to God, glory to God. God is so good. If you can get through that last song without bawling your eyes out, you're a better man and woman than I am. Um, God is so good. Consecrate yourself to Him. He will bless you beyond measure. But it's not about us. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. And we're going to look at that today. Uh, we've been looking at uh, chapter 24 and, uh, in Matthew. And we started in last week. And Brother Dan guided us towards the truth of these scriptures that reaches from Matthew 24.1 through 25.46. And really all the way through to Revelation. We need to be ready. We need to be aware. We need to be looking. We are called and need to be obedient to Jesus Christ and His Word. We can easily get off track by worrying or arguing about prophecy or signs or wonders. Or what, but what we must do, what we must do, is be grounded in God's Word. Grounded in the facts of His Word. Not in our feelings, not in our opinions, but in the facts of his word. Let's listen carefully to what John the Apostle speaks of Jesus. Listen carefully. John 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. John 1.14 The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1.18 No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only, who is at the Father's side and has made Him known. John 1.29 The next day, John, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Revelation 19.11 Put your listening ears on. Coming soon to a sky near you. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God, the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Listen carefully as John the Apostle and all of heaven now describe who this Jesus is. Revelation 5.1 Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll, written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Hallelujah. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. 
And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. And you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth, occupy. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne, and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering millions upon millions, myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Where does worship start? Starts in heaven. Pours out upon us. It starts every day within us. He who has him abiding within him. He must abide within us and we must abide within him. Worship starts every day. If this is the only worship time you get, oh, you are so missing it. You are so missing it. God has called us to so much more. Amy said it. It's not about this building. It's not about a program. It's not about a person. It's about Jesus Christ. He is the one who is worthy. He is the one who laid down his life. He is the one who has paid our price. He is the one who redeems us. He is the Savior of all mankind. There is no name under heaven by which man may be saved but Jesus. Don't kid yourselves. Don't listen to the world. Please, listen to your God. There's no other way into the sheepfold but by the shepherd. Any other way into the sheepfold is seen thievery and robbery. Don't get convinced by the world that there's many ways unto God. You might arrive there at the wedding feast and he may look you in the face and say, where's your wedding garment? Who invited you? How did you get here? And he tells Michael, maybe Gabriel, maybe all the saints, bind them up. I don't know them. And sends them into utter darkness. That's God's word, not mine. That's his opinion, not ours. He is a holy and just and beautiful God. And he's calling us for such a time as this. Come unto salvation. If you're here without the Lord today, come. If you don't know this Jesus of which we speak, come. If you do, stand up. If you do, let's go. If you do, we're called to do something now for such a time as this. Because the white horse is charging and stomping the ground of heaven and the white horse, white horse is ready for its rider. We have to understand that. We have to know that. A little off course on that. But we'll get back on course. Today we will read and look at Matthew from chapter 24, verses 15 through 28. What Dan talked about in Matthew 4, 1 through 14 is linked directly to what we are reading today by the word, therefore. That's a connecting link in between what Dan was talking about, what we're going to talk about today, therefore. What's therefore, therefore? It's always pointing back, right? God's word is always doing that. It's pointing back and it's pointing forward. Today we're going to look a little bit into Daniel, so we're going to be looking back, and the prophecy is looking forward. And then we'll look a little bit back, and then we're looking forward this tie of this amazing tapestry of life. A tapestry. Have you ever looked at the back of a tapestry, the old-style tapestries? You ever turned them around and looked at the back? Did it look like the picture on the front? It's really strange. It's just strings and spaghetti going every which direction. And we go, it doesn't even make sense. I wonder what the picture looks like on the other side. 
Well, sometimes that's our life. It's just that tapestry going to and fro, lives being intertwined, the word of God being intertwined, where we're going to and fro, intertwined, and all of a sudden Jesus turns it around in salvation, and he says, look at that picture that I've been doing with your life. And you wake up and you say, oh, praise you, God. I must bow down and, and just praise you, Lord. You are holy, you are just, you are merciful, you are mighty, you are awesome, God, who has saved me, a wretch like me. How can you even think on me? But he does. And he paid that price. And he loves a wretch like me. And he loves a wretch like you. Praise God. Praise God. Both of these passages, what Dan wrote, read and what we're going to look at today, speak of the end of the age. But Matthew 24, 15 through 22, homes in on or particularizes on a great event in that time period. That event being the prophesied or the foretold abomination of desolation in the holy place. The name or description, the abomination of desolation, is very significant. Don't miss it. Abomination of desolation being the desolating abomination or that abominable thing or that thing which threatened and brought desolation upon. We have to get, what does that mean? It just sounds like some grandiose apocalyptic word. Uh, you know, this abomination of desolation. We can just cross right over and say, I don't understand it, so I just, I'll, I'll leave it to somebody else to think about. We're to think about it. We're to know that the time is now. We're to know that we're to be looking about at this world and going because of what's happening, because of salvation is what transforms us. Because of trans uh, transformation is what compels us. Does anybody in here feel compelled over the last three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six months? Compelled to say and do something that you've never done before? I don't know about you, but the Lord is stirring something right now. His Holy Spirit is stirring something right now worldwide. The Holy Spirit is what holds back the man of lawlessness. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit must be removed. If the Holy Spirit is removed, are we here? Praise be to God. When the Holy Spirit's removed, those who are all of the Holy Spirit, those who are of Him, are gone. Those that are here today that are listening and can't hear me, remember this when that time comes. Those of you right now, you don't know why you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ, and you're seeing what you're seeing and you're hearing what you're hearing in God's Word, and you remain, remember what was told you on this day in 2021. Don't forget it. Immediately look to the scriptures and look to Daniel and say, wow, how could I have missed it? That's why Jesus said, let the reader understand when we get into uh, Matthew 24. It's very clear from Christ's own words that the term or description comes from Daniel's prophecy. It occurs in Daniel 9.27. It occurs in Daniel 11.31. In Daniel 12.11. The word abomination is used in the Bible as that which is distinctly detestable or offensive to God and is rejected by Him. It is used with reference to heathen gods, idols, and things connected with them. We can conclude in our minds, look for clues. I I'm an ex-police officer. I love looking at clues. I love finding clues. I love finding the answer. I love seeking things out in an investigatory manner looking at it and this is a clue people if you're asleep right now and you're saying Brian's droning on and I have no idea what he's talking about listen to me listen to me yesterday I could barely move and barely walk my leg it hurt so bad I can tell you right now that Jesus is moving in a mighty powerful way and we need to wake up the church in America needs to wake up the church worldwide needs to wake up the church right here in Oakfield New York Basem, New York, wherever New York, needs to wake up. You're called for such a time as this. We need to be moving. God is allowing us to see, and we need to move towards what he's pointing you towards. Let's wake up together. I'm not chewing or rebuking you. I'm telling you what the Lord's been rebuking me with all week. Brian, do you see what I see? Yes, Lord. No, no, Brian. Listen, knucklehead, listen. Do you see what I see? 
well, Lord, I see some people gathering. I see some people coming alive. I see some people waking up. I see some people having callings that they're, they're, they're being stirred inside to, to do something for Jesus that's, that's more substantial and, and not because of themselves, because they're ready to be insignificant. Do you think Dan Wampler accidentally brought that message a couple weeks ago? Are you willing to be the insignificant one? Are you willing to say, I'm charging into battle and it's okay if I die before I get there? None of us want that. Oh, I want my name in lights. Oh, I want my name in books. I want my name on the side of a building. Boy, it'd be nice if my name was on a roadway somewhere. Who cares? Who cares? That's for the world's eyes. Whose eyes do we care about? This Jesus that we just read about in Revelation. That's who we care about. Who cares if we're the most insignificant Christian that ever walked the planet? Praise be to God. But be an active, moving, insignificant Christian. It's awesome. It's powerful. It's mighty because it's in him, and he'll cause you to do things you never thought you could do. He'll cause you to say things that you said, there's no way I could ever memorize God's word. I can tell you right now, baloney. Amy hates when I say that. Malarkey. <laughs> baloney shenanigans you can memorize God's word but that doesn't bring salvation you can quote God's word doesn't bring salvation you might lead thousands of people to Jesus Christ and it doesn't bring salvation I may preach to you over and over again trying to awaken your spirit, maybe even bringing people to the brink of salvation and unto Jesus, and I may put myself in hell if I don't know Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? That happens. People preach the word their whole life and they stand before the Lord. They say, haven't I done great and wonderful things? I never knew you. What are you talking about? I, 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 did, I did miracles. I, I did all kinds of things. I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, you man of lawlessness. Be careful when the man of lawlessness, the man of sin, starts doing false miracles in front of you and starts pretending to be the man of God, starts pretending to be God himself. When you start seeing that or hearing that, and if you can't see it right now that the world's marching for that, the great delusion... If you can't see the church in general worldwide falling away, there is a huge falling away from the church of God. Huge. I'll get back off that. Let us read together Matthew 24, starting at verse 15. Lord, give me time. Lengthen the time, Lord. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, going back, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. The reader of what? The reader of Daniel. Let the person go back and read Daniel and understand it. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. So is that us? Are we in Judea? Do we live in Judea? So who's going to be fleeing to the mountains? Those in Judea. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in the house. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. Is there some urgency there? Real urgency. Don't even turn around. What does that sound like? Does anybody know their Old Testament? Abraham had a little relative named Lot. What was Lot told to do when he was coming out of Sodom and Gomorrah? What was it? Say it louder. What does it say? Everybody. What? And his wife did what? What happened? Is God serious when he tells us don't, don't look back? He's pretty serious. Don't look back for your life, your soul depends on it. And the men and women of righteousness will obey. We will run and not look back. But right now you're not running. You don't have to run. Run towards the one who saves. Run towards the one who equips. Run towards the one who's pouring out his blessings upon you right now. We're the richest nation in the world. Do you miss that? Are we missing that? He who has been given much is required much. 
You've been given so much love, so much freedom, so much time. Are you missing it? Are we so caught up in grumbling about who's in power and who's not in power and who's doing what and who's enacting what? Who cares? They say, Brian, well, you can't, you can't walk blindly. I'm not walking blindly. I'm telling you, folks, my eyes are wide open. God himself is saying, do you see as I see? Stop getting caught up in the civilian affairs and start training like a soldier. Why is he calling soldiers unto himself right now? Why do you think that? You've got to have somebody to train. Why do you think around the world, this is worldwide, not just here in the United States, around the world, worldwide, he is calling soldiers unto himself right now. He is calling army men, air force men, navy men, all around the world, and women, all unto himself. Why? Because they understand that training. And he needs guiders. He needs trainers to say, get up and get serious. If a drill sergeant gets in your face in the morning, any of you that's been in the military, are they kind of serious? Mr. Cassicelli, do, they, do you take it seriously when a drill gets in your face? Yes. And his round, br <laughs> and his round brown is bumping off your forehead, and you're going, what is this guy's problem? I wish he'd take a breath mint. You know, he's, he's right in my face. What is up with this guy? God is serious, and we need to get serious. We need to get serious. I'm sorry. If those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. 23. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. How strong is the delusion going to be? How strong are the fake signs and wonders going to be? Almost to the point, almost to the point that he could lead the elect away. That's a pretty strong delusion. That's a pretty strong false acts of mercy and grace that aren't real. How do you know a counterfeit? How do you know a counterfeit? By knowing the real thing. You can only know a counterfeit by knowing the real thing. If you don't know this Jesus that we're talking about and you don't study him and you don't know him and you don't seek him and he doesn't reveal himself to you, you will buy hook, line, and sinker the deception of the age. I'm telling you, you will. If you're here right now and you're like, I just like coming because it's kind of like a rotary club. It's kind of like the volunteer fire department. It's just, it's just kind of like a good group of people. I just like to hang around and they're nice. They speak well of me. They hug me every now and then. They shake my hand. They keep their distance and respect me. If I, You understand why? That's not why we're here. Say that with me. That's not why we're here. Why are we here? We're here to worship Jesus Christ. We're here to become equipped unto what? Equipped unto good works. Are we saved by good works? That's never been preached here and never will be. But when you're saved, when you're walking forth because of justification, into sanctification, into purification, into perfection, what are we doing in the meantime? Good works. Why? Drawing glory to yourself? No, drawing glory unto the one who is worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who is praised. Throwing down our gold and anything, any reward. We will stand before the Lord and weep. And I think weep because when he says, turn around and great is your reward, we'll weep because we say, we didn't earn that. That was you. No, great is your reward. Father, no. No, that was you. That was you living in me. That was you speaking in me. That was you calling me. That was you trying. That was all you. And we'll take any reward he gives us and we'll throw it at his feet because worthy is the lamb who was slain. How will you know this abomination? How will you know this desolator? How will you know this counterfeiter? How will you know this murderer? How will you know this liar and deceiver? By knowing the original Savior Jesus Christ by knowing he who of which we are saved unto the uttermost for eternity. Amen? Amen. 
thought you fell asleep, sorry. Mark, turn to Mark real quick. Hang, hang on for the whirlwind here. God speaks in a whirlwind. Nahum and Habakkuk. Anybody read Nahum and Habakkuk? If you haven't, shame on you. He speaks in a whirlwind. Hang on. Grab a tail, right? Mark 13. Mark 13, starting at verse 14. Mark 13, starting at verse 14. I'll wait till the pages stop. It's, it's beautiful sounding. Thank you for bringing your Bibles. One thing we should be doing in church, bringing our Bibles, right? How about at home? But when you see the abomination of desolation standing where he ought not to be, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down, nor enter his house to take anything out. And let the one who is in the field not turn back his cloak. And alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, whew, pray that it may not happen in the winter. Why? Is it hard to move in the winter? Is it hard to run in the winter? How about if you're pregnant? Ladies, is it hard to run when you're pregnant? My daughter would say yes right now. Her back's killing her, so pray for her. 19, for in, for in those days there will be such tribulation as has not been from the beginning of creation. Wow, that's got to be pretty bad. How bad was it just before Noah? So bad that God crushed in a deluge of water the whole earth but eight. How bad is this tribulation going to be? I don't want to be there. Holy Spirit taken out. Lord, take me with you. Lord, take me with you. There will be a tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the creation that God created until now and never will be again. And if the Lord had not cut short the days, see, he's merciful. He's mighty. He's merciful. No human being would be saved, but for the sake of the elect whom he chose, he shortened the days. Now that's the elect that's during the tribulation. Those are the, those are the ones that missed it. Those are the ones that said, yeah, I, I, I like church. It's, it's okay. It's kind of, I like it. It's kind of hanging out. You know, those guys are kind of okay. Or I don't like church. I don't like those religious people. I hate church. I, I was raised in church. I hate it. It, it was so, it was just rules, 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 and everybody was yelling and screaming at me. Has everybody ever given you rules, 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 and yelled and screamed at you here? It's, well, maybe I yell a little bit. It's Jesus Christ, right? It's Jesus saved. It's Jesus in us. It's Jesus, he is all these things, right? So in these things, we have to see that this is the elect within this tribulation period that we're talking about. So he shortens the days because of those that are being saved. And then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, here he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise. How do you know a false Christ or a false prophet? You know the real ones. Will arise and perform signs and wonders. Oh, I thought only God did signs and wonders. Interesting, huh? To lead astray, if possible, the elect. But be on your guard. Remember what uh, Brother Dan said. Be ready. Look up. Look out. Be moving forward as you're looking. I have told you all these things beforehand. Do you remember that I told you my greatest sergeant ever in my life was the one who told me how hard it was going to be ahead of time? Loved that guy. Just really loved that guy. He always told me when things were going to be terrible. I shouldn't use the word suck, but he would say, when things are going to suck, when they're going to be terrible, be ready for it. He told me ahead of time, love that guy. Here's a Savior who's so merciful, so kind, so caring. So he's telling generations ahead of him from 70 A.D. on to the next one, right? What is 70 A.D.? Does anybody know? The temple was destroyed. Was that the Great Tribulation? Was there tribulation there, though? Was there an abomination of desolation there? Was the Roman guard in the temple? They shouldn't have been there, should they? Did they bring standards and signs in the temple? They shouldn't have been there. So there was a foretaste. There was a type of shadow. There was a type of abomination of desolation in 70 AD. There's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in your mind if you study it. There was a foreshadowing in Daniel's time, or within a couple hundred years. 
he already told us, when you look back on the man Antiochus Epiphanes IV, and you look at him, there was a type of abomination of desolation. He, he brought in the temple pigs and slaughtered them. He made the temple a temple unto Zeus and Jupiter. That was an abomination unto desolation. He was a desolator, but he wasn't this one. Titus, taking in his army, taking in Gallus, they're surrounding Jerusalem. Unbelievable. You've got to study history. I love history. It is amazing. When you're an investigator and look into history, it's awesome. Amazingly, this Roman general surrounds and sieges Jerusalem. And all of a sudden, inexplicably, he backs off. And the Christians all escape. That's historical. Did you know that? Read Josephus. Read Eusebius. Read, read your historians. It is amazing. They escape and they go off into a land of Perea. And they go to an area of Gala. And they go to an uh, area of Pella. And they go to a, a Mount Lisbonus. And they go to these places and they hide. And they're saved from this tribulation of 70 A.D. Now we're looking forward. Remember, we're looking back and looking forward, looking back and looking forward. This God of ours is so awesome. He wants us never to be not aware. He wants always for our minds to be thinking. Now, if we look at history, Jesus was standing outside Jerusalem upon his triumphal entry. Does anyone know what he said? He was weeping. Do you remember that? He wept. Remember what he said. They should have known the day. They should have known the time when he was going to come. Why? Because he had said ahead of time. Through who? The prophet Daniel. The times were already given to the year, to the day, when he would arrive. And they missed it. So here, what does he say? Let the reader understand. Let the reader understand understand. So as you're reading scripture, ask the Lord, let me understand, Lord. Let me see what you see. Let me know what you know. He just shut me off. There you go. Um, going down further, go to Luke. I got about eight minutes, so I got to hurry. Mike gave me too much time. Luke 21. Luke 21. Now this Luke is telling us, he's a historian, he's a medical doctor, he's very thorough, and he's telling us about something that sounds like it's about to happen. But he's paralleling the same thing that Jesus is already talking about in the future, and this is the future, but it sounds like something that's a little bit closer in its speaking. So I would guess that there was an answer of yet, but not yet, but in the future in Jesus' answer. When they came to him and they asked him these questions, when will these times be? When will this thing happen? When, when are all these things you're talking about going to happen? Luke writes this, and it sounds a little bit different from the others. Listen carefully. Luke 21, verse 20. Luke 21, verse 20. Is everybody there? But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, were they going to see Jerusalem surrounded by armies? Yeah. Gallus is there. Then know that its desolation has come near. Do you think that Jerusalem is going to be surrounded by armies again in the future? Absolutely. Do you know that the United Nations almost daily puts a sanction on Israel? Do you know that? Almost daily, this little country the size of Rhode Island, the United Nation is so trembling every single day, and at least every week, puts another sanction or a smack in the hand on Israel. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are the days of vengeance, to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for the women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days. Not a good place to be. For there will be a great distress upon the earth, whole earth, wrath against this people. What people? 
Jewish people. They will fall by the edge of the sword. Do you know that in 70 AD, 1,100,000 men and women and children were killed? Did you know that? That's a historical fact. 1,100,000 people. Over 100,000 were taken into captivity. Sounds a little bit like what we're talking about. Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles. But here comes a strange thing that hasn't happened yet. Until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Interesting. So he's looking forward to 70 AD that they don't know is going to happen yet. They, do you think that they did know that it was going to happen? They take Jesus out and they say, look at the temple. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't the polished limestone and the polished marble covered in gold? Over 100 foot tall walls. That's not going to disappear. We've got this, Jesus. That's going to fall. Every single stone in that building will fall. Every one of them will be turned over on itself. Who would have even thunk, thought it possible in that time period that that was going to happen? Well, it happened. And there's archaeological proof. You can go over there. It happened. The stones that you see now stacked up are not the original walls. Those are walls over different time periods that have been put back. There's, there's different time periods there. You got, you got Nehemiah's walls. You got Solomon's walls. You got Herod's temple. All mixed in together, put back. That's what's there. It's not the original, folks. Know that. What Jesus said happened. If what Jesus says happens, should we pay attention? I'm going to skip down. Thank you, Mike, for reading 2 Thessalonians. When you get home, read 2 Thessalonians again. Very important. Let's go to application. How about an application of being ready, of being watchful, of being obedient to God's word? Listen carefully, listen carefully. Put on your ears. Colossians 3. Colossians 3, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds... On the things that are above, not on the things of this earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Put to death sexual immorality. Put to death impurity. Put to death passions not of God put to get put to death evil desires put to death covetousness envying what others have which is idolatry on account of these the wrath of God is coming what did we just read in Revelation 19 who was the wrath to come the rider on the white horse is bringing the wrath to come I want to be behind him not in front of him how about you? I want to be broken on him, not by him. I hope you don't either. On account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked. If we're a believer, we once walked that way. But when you were living in them, you walked that way. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth don't lie to one another see that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator here there is not greek nor jew circumcised uncircumcised barbarian scythian slave free christ is all and in all put on then okay i threw that off put on then what in these last days Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, you must also forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. I have a little bit more that I'd like to share with you if you want to meet with me. I have to close because of time. 
But I want us to understand this Jesus that they're talking about in Romans 4, or, uh, Revelation 4, Revelation 5 is the Jesus that you worship. It's not the Jesus that we've made up in our minds. It's not this wishy-washy flower child Jesus. It's not. I'm not saying that to be funny. It's not. That's what the world wants you to believe. That's what the world wants to believe. This Jesus that we love so much, this gentle, kind, loving Savior who died how? With his arms wide open. I know I've said this before, but there's some visitors here. Why did Jesus die with his arms wide open? Why? He said he laid down his life. He said no one can take my life from me. No one. So if no one could take his life from him, and he had to lay it down, who really placed his hands on the cross like this? Rome? Are you kidding me? Jews? Jesus laid down on the cross of his own accord and gave up his life freely for you and me, arms wide open. And he still says to this day, Come, all you who are weary, all you who are heavy laden, come unto me and find rest. Any of you struggle with anxiety recently? Stress? All bound up inside? Not knowing what tomorrow's going to bring? Just worried about everything? Go outside today and close your eyes and just listen to the birds. I stood outside this morning and just closed my eyes and felt that sunshine and listened to the birds. I counted nine different species of birds singing. It was so beautiful. And then geese, way in the distance, I heard geese. What's that a sign of? Spring. The birds are singing a chorus unto who? Worthy, worthy, worthy is God Almighty. Do you know that's what the birds sing? We think that they're singing to each other. Well, there's probably some communication going on, but I have an idea that they're saying, Worthy, worthy, worthy is God Almighty. Worthy is the Creator of all kind. Worthy is Jesus Christ who came to save. They can't wait for creation to be set free. The animals. But He sets us free. Arms wide open on the cross. Come unto me, all you who are weary. All you who are heavy laden, find your rest. For my ways are different. My ways are light. Yoking with me is a light walk. Christianity is not a hard thing. In him, in your own power, it's impossible. It's like walking with your legs in mud. It's like walking with three bulging discs against your vertebrae. That's how hard walking without the Lord is. Walking with the Lord, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Could not do that last week. God is unbelievable. He is a good God. He loves us. He's merciful and he's kind. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. This single day that you saw at the beginning of time. This special day that we had no idea would ever exist in our lives or those around us. Father, we thank you for you seeing us through eternity. For you, Jesus, for seeing us and pointing forward and saying, I'm warning you ahead of time. I love you that much. More blessed are they that see... That's not what he says. More blessed are they that don't see me and believe than those who see and believe. Father God, I thank you that we can not see you personally with us right now, and we believe. But Lord, we know that you're living within us. It's an explanation we truly don't totally understand. But Father, we declare it to the nations. We declare it to the tribes. We declare it everywhere as we go. Father, I pray if there is one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior of their life, that today would be their day of salvation. Today would be that day. Father, I pray for those of us that are just sitting comfortably in our lives. Those of us that are so caught up in the civilian affairs of life that all we do is murmur and grumble and walk with heavy hands and walk with heavy feet. 
Lord, we come to you today and we lay that at your cross. We put that at your feet. Father, set us free. We thank you that you've done that. We thank you that you always hear us. We thank you that you always see us. Thank you, Lord, for setting us free today that we can walk anew, refreshed. Father, it, it feels like we're walking in a mountain meadow right now, just walking with you and hearing your word. Holy, holy, holy are you, God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Thank you, Father, for stirring us with your Holy Spirit. Walk with us into the Sunday school hour. Lord, may it be an honor and a benefit and an exhortation to your elect. We ask these things, we declare them, and we proclaim them in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you so much.